Shalom, O praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Harakar Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. This is Payala coming at you again with another um, epistle. Um, the title will be determined upon upload. But the, top, the topic I'm going to delve into is um, the famine of the hearing of the word. All right? Because this is a time that's imp impending quickly, all right? Through the Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit being upon the Apostle, the Elder Apostle, oh, he basically made, you know, the commission of one video a day, all right? From the previous three videos a week, all right? And that should let you know when, you know, as it tells you in the book of Second Ezra, the ninth chapter, measure the times um, diligently. Basically, if 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 that's a command that's been presented through the Spirit, then that means that the gates of mercy are basically closing. So they're near, they're they're, they're closing basically. So in that, the fact that they're closing, there needs to be a great push for the word to go out before it take it, it basically close the gates of mercy the doors of mercy gates of mercy close all right whereby you know it makes it, it the prophets being on the highways and byways the videos on the internet access to the word is basically taken away all right so if anything knowing this this is for you now like to wake up and really know what time you're in. If if 2020 ain't showed you that, you know, from the beginning of the year up to here, then, psh, boy, there's a lot, There's a, it's going to get a lot worse, man. And that's the reality, okay? So this is, I'm going to delve right into this lesson and I pray you be edified, all right? So this is Amos 8 and 11. Behold, the days cometh, saith the Lord power, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord Yahweh. All right. So I'm going to read it again and break it down. So it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Power. All right. The Lord Power is basically talk about the Most High Power, Yahweh. That's his true name. He declared it unto Moses going back into the time of Egypt. All right. And the name Yahweh means he to be. All right. And to believe in the most high power, as it tells you in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, you have to believe that he is, all right? So you have to have faith and believe that he exists, all right? And really in doing so, you know, your faith is shown, is declared by that, by your works, basically. So having belief in the Lord, you're going to have, you're going to do works to show your faith, all right? So let me read again. But all the days come, saith the Lord power, Yahweh. I will send a famine in the land, all right? So he says he's going to send a famine, all right? What's a famine? A, the typical famine in terms of food, bread, would be a lack of bread, basically. So there's no, not everyone can eat, all right? Because there's a lack of bread. Not a famine of bread, not a thirst for war. So this ain't a famine of, of, of bread, basically, or a thirst for war. It's a different kind of famine. But of the hearing of the words of of the Lord Yahweh, all right. So basically, he's gonna bring apart a famine of hearing the words of the Lord Yahweh. Now, what you gotta understand, you gotta understand how precious this word is, because going back to the book of Daniel, the twelfth chapter, and the fourth verse, Daniel was told, um, I believe by the angel Michael, to basically seal the sayings of the book. All right, so. This book has been, the understanding has been sealed going back then. And then was, it was sealed until the point of the time the Lord basically came down upon the earth and conquered the flesh, right? After being put up on the cross, being made a ransom for the nation of Israel, a sacrificial lamb. And basically in doing so, that allowed, when he went up to the heavens, right? When you read Revelation, Revelations, the fifth chapter, he basically, when there was a cry by the angel saying that, is there any man worthy in the, in the heavens or the earth to open a book? No man was found, all right? And then um, John the Revelator says he wept much. But then after that, it says that 
the line um, of the concrete. Let me actually read Revelations 5 very quickly because it's, it's an imperative. It's a great point, all right? So it's Revelations 5 and 9, and they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yahweh by thy blood of every kindred. All right, and this is the cut for when you read Revelation, the seventh chapter and the ninth verse, where it says that um, there was a multitude gathered out of all nations. It isn't talking about heathens, it's talking about the Israelites that were scattered amongst them nations. All right, when you read um, Hosea 8 and 8, it tells you about Israel being scattered. All right. Even Yahweh Shai spoke of it in the book of John. You know, they spoke of it, I believe it's John 7, about will he go, where will he go? Will he go to the scattered among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? All right. So he's talking about the Israelites that have been scattered, that he was going to redeem and bring them back onto, to, onto the power. So it says, reading on, it says, um, and has redeemed us to Yahweh by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation all right so that's the cut for that but then this is really what happened when he opened when he took the book all right because he was the only man worthy to do so and break the seals thereof verse 10 and it says that and has made us unto our power kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth all right so basically he redeemed us unto our power and in doing so he allowed us to basically become what is spoke of in the book of exodus the 19th chapter five and six about being a kingdom a peculiar nation of kings and priests a kingdom of priests basically right serving the most high power so let me get back to amos eight but in doing so that's why at the time that we're in right like it said a famine of hearing the words of the lord how 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 um desirous these words to be heard are is the fact that it, it was sealed for so long and now it's been opened back up, all right? Starting off with Abba Bivens in this day and age, Abba Bivens down to um, King Marsha, High Priest Arya, High Priest Yaakob, down to the Apost Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Gabar, Elder Apostle uh, Rakar, Elder Apostle Ramlab, and then all the men that fall in rank and file. In um in Great Millstone, all right, and those even that are outside Great Millstone that have the correct doctrine, all right, that's this this time that's period that precious word is now being published abroad, okay, and we we're told in Revelations of twenty second chapter to seal not the sayings of this book, but guess what? We haven't been sealing the sayings of this book, but now there's a famine of hearing the words of the Lord, so the words are going to be taken away, all right. So that judgment can come to pass. So I'm going to read this. Uh, this is Romans 10 and 13. I'm going to read down to 18. All right. So it says, for whatsoever, Romans 10, 13, down to 18. Yeah. So it says, um, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh shall be saved. All right. So for you to have the name of the Lord Yahweh, you have to have been, basically, you have to be taught. And it's going to go into that. And that's one of the, the the great gems that has to, you know, that has to be dropped on you, basically. Um, one of the precious treasures of the word of the Lord, all right? But then even as people that have the name and they'll call upon the name, but guess what? They're still sealed for destruction. And that's why, psh, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Because, hey, man, it says the righteous shall scarcely be saved, Okay. So we know that we're working out our our our, our um, salvation with fear and trembling, right? Working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, but um, to get back to this verse, it says, "For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved." Right? So if you call on the name Yahweh, as it tells you in Proverbs eighteen and ten, the name of the Lord is a strong tower; the righteous runneth in, and are safe. All right. Basically, the Lord will save you. All right, but you can't just call on the name. Even though you have it, that's why it says, um, you know, that there be men that say, "Lord, Lord," and he will say, "I I never knew thee, you that part um, depart from me, ye, ye that work iniquity." 
right? So reading on it says, verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, all right? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher, all right? So there was a, for there to be a famine of the hearing of the word, there would have to be a preacher, all right? As you know, the word preach in the Greek is ecclesia, which means to call out. And the calling out is made in the highway on, on in the in the chief place of concourse, basically. All right. So that means that there was a preacher sent forth. All right. Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? All right. Because you can't preach. The spirit can't be put on you to preach unless the most High put the spirit on you. But the same way you can put the spirit on you, the same way you can take it off. That's why King David made had the psalm of Psalm 51 and 11 about take not thy holy um that spirit away from him basically and a good example of that is king saul man saul was amongst the prophets and then he was he was um but then he he wound up being getting his name the rays from history and presented in a, in an ill light all right whenever he spoke of again this this shows you what type of power we're dealing with all right so it says and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, all right? Because only those men that are doing those things are of the elect, okay? And they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. And that's the point, all right? Those that who, who believe the report. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Most High. Because it tells you in Ephesians 2 and 8, faith is a gift from the Most High power. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went out, went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. All right? So basically, this period that we're presently in is a time for the word to go out to the whole world. All right? And it's being done by a vehicle known as the World Wide Web. All right? Um... In the book of Matthew 24, 14, it tells you that um, the word shall be preached all across the world and then shall the end come, all right? But then, how is that going to be done, all right? Because Yahweh Shai also said about that, you know, told his disciples to go into every, every city of Israel, basically, and they wouldn't be able to go into every city, all right, before he come back. But basically, we had the... the, the um, the unicorn to help us it tells you that in deuteronomy 33 and 17 about it pushing the people together all right so what people is it pushing together israel but more specifically the elect of the nation of israel okay so that's why it says by say have they not heard yes verily their sound went into all the earth and their words onto the ends of the world because the unicorn was used to push the the unicorn basically goes back to the feed horn of the satellites, which basically the Most High gave Esau the tech, made the internet for the sole purpose of pushing the word of Yahweh Barsham El Shai for the purpose of the elect. All right. So I'm going to finish up on this scripture and I pray you've been edified. So this is Romans 11 and 7. What then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it. And the rest were blinded, all right? So Israel didn't receive all, all, all Israel didn't receive it, but only the elect, because the rest were blinded. As it tells you in the book of Matthew 13, 9 and 10, um, um, he, he that has ears, ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples come to him, saying, um, why speak ye unto them in parables? Then he said, for you, because for you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom to he of heaven, but to them it's not given, all right? And he basically went into quoting Isaiah 6 and 9, all right? So it says, I'll read it again. It says, What then Israel have not obtained that which it seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So count yourself blessed the fact that you can see this, man, and really hope that the Lord don't take the spirit off you and endure uh, through all things, because this is... We're heading into the time of Jacob's trouble, basically. Because once this word gets taken off, that's when it's a whole different stage now, all right? And that's why we've been enduring for all this time. And we hope that all our works be carried with us and basically be a surety in that time of trouble, okay? 
So verse 8 says, according as it is written, Yahweh have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Okay? So they basically wouldn't see it. And that's dealing with even the fact that, you know, wisdom cry for foul, he are for words, it, she are for words um, in the streets. And basically, you know, we, the, the apostles, the apostles starting with the, the elders, elders, the apostles, the, you know, the men that, uh, the, you know, the pedigree of this, um, at the foot of the genealogy of Israel. They've been pushing this word for, for many decades, okay? And basically, all that time the word's been out there, they basically, you know, pushed their hand, pushed the most High's hand away. And now, basically, when it goes down, as it tells you in Proverbs, the first chapter, you know, when their fear cometh as a desolation, then shall I, basically, the most High is going to laugh at them, right? So it says, and David saith on say if let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way all right because ultimately it's all about the elect all right revelation 7 and 1 that's why hey, this whole famine of the word is coming because famine of hearing the word because it's the elect have been sealed the destruction is only being held back for the sake of the elect, right? So with that, I pray you are edified. I say shalom.